Hello everyone. So welcome back. We'll be discussing on the classification of phylum Echinodermata, and here in this presentation, we'll be looking into the features of class Asteroidea and one example. Uh, Asteroidea, the sea stars, it includes the sea stars or the starfishes. They often live on hard substrates in marine environment, and some species live in sandy or muddy substrates. They are flattened. Uh, free living echinoderms commonly called as starfishes or sea stars and uh, you can see that uh, the sea stars they are composed of here you can see a typical uh, what you call the uh, figure that shows a, fi a figure sh which shows a typical asteroid or we can call it as a sea star okay the sea stars it is composed of a central disc here you can see this one is a central disc okay and uh, uh, this merges gradually with the tapering arms. You can see here it is broad over here and it is narrower. It's tapering arms. And these arms are otherwise referred as rays. Okay. Because it is radial. Right. Okay. Then the body is somewhat flattened, flexible, covered with ciliated pigmented epidermis. And their mouth here you can see the mouth is uh, uh, placed on the on one side. Uh, and ambulacral grooves and mouth on the lower side or we can call it as an oral side because mouth is present on that side okay oral side and the anus and uh, the madriporite it is on the other side which is referred as a aboral side okay so this is the oral side and this is the aboral side or surface okay oral and aboral surface now in the oral surface um, the mouth is located in the center of the central disc and the mouth is surrounded by or it is centered on the oral surface which is surrounded by a soft peristomial membrane okay and radiating from each uh, from the mouth to each arm onto each arm you can see an ambulacral area ambulacra it is a uh, term which means it's a latin term which means an alley or a, a path a covered path okay so it is somewhat like this right it's a covered path like okay so this area which extends from the mouth to each of the arm it is known as an ambulacra okay uh, and ambul or ambulacral area fine and this runs from the mouth on the oral surface to uh, of each arm to the tip of the arm over here okay and sea stars typically they have five arms uh, but some may have more usually in multiples of five and there are uh, as many ambulacral areas as there are arms so each arm do have a ambulacral area extending from the mouth till the tip of each of the arm okay and uh, you can see an ambulacral groove is found along the middle of each of the ambulacral area so this part is known as the ambulacral area and you can see in the center there is an ambulacral groove passing through the along the middle of each of the arm okay and the groove uh, the ambulacral groove is surrounded by uh, a rows of tube feet you can see over here tube feet okay the structural details we'll be learning in uh, detail when we discuss about the type species uh, uh, asterias rubens but for here the tube feet it's around the rows of tube feet actually border the uh, ambulacral group okay and uh, uh, these uh, uh, what you call the tube feet are in turn protected by you can see over here the spines okay so uh, the tube feet it is meant for locomotion uh, it also helps in uh, what you call feeding uh, and uh, uh, respiration so it is a small structure that uh, uh, actually uh, helps in different uh, functions okay now uh, here you can see in the case of ast uh, the asteroids, the ambulacral grooves, it is uh, not covered by uh, ossicles or any other dermal tissue and hence it is open type. Okay, so in crinoids which we have seen previously and asteroids over here, the ambulacral grooves, they are not covered by uh, ossicles, dermal ossicles and hence the uh, uh, these two have open type of uh, uh, the ambulacral groove. Okay, while all other groups which we'll be discussing in the coming uh, these it, uh, coming presentations, it will they are all closed type of ambulacral group. Okay, so so ambulacral groups are open channels studded with sucker bearing tube feet, and dermal ossicles are loose, flexible, and separate pieces that cover the 
body okay now respiratory structures it, they are mainly uh, dermal branchiae here and uh, now regarding the aboral surface if you see it is usually rough and spiny although the spines of many species are flattened and uh, hence the surface appears almost smooth okay and around the bases of the spines you can see um, uh, structures which are known as pedicellariae pincer like structures uh, known as pedicellariae and uh, they bear tiny jaws which are uh, manipulated or which are uh, um, made functional by the help of muscles okay and these uh, uh, pedicellariae it helps in keeping the surface clean that is free of any debris okay so this is about the uh, uh, aboral surface right now as already mentioned uh, the body wall they contain uh, dermal branchiae or papillae and they extend between the ossicles and they help in respiration okay the dermal branchiae or the skin gills that is what the um, term means isn't it dermal in the sense skin and branchiae referring to the gills okay so dermal branchiae or the papillae they help in uh, respiration and they usually extend between the ossicles okay uh, so this is about the uh, what you call asteroidium okay there are almost like 1500 living species actually and they enjoy worldwide distribution in co coastal waters there are many species uh, which uh, you may have come across the asterias which is a common uh, starfish another common starfish is this the astropecten the spelling mistake it is astro okay then we have pentaceres uh, we have uh, solaster echinaster etc and here we will be learning about the astropecten okay astropecten as already mentioned it is a common starfish and it is a solitary animal that is usually it is found alone a single individual is found they inhabit a uh, sea from below the tide mark to greater depths okay and it is a sluggish form uh, usually found creeping very slowly on the sea bottom and the, uh, in the during rest they remain partially buried in the sand you can see it is almost like uh, similar in color isn't it but yeah uh, one important feature about the asteroids that is a uh, the generally about starfishes they are brilliantly colored okay just like the uh, sea lilies or the crinoids which we have seen previously they are all uh, brilliantly colored um, organisms okay so the, the body of uh, uh, the uh, astropectin it is flat and pentamerous uh, with distinct aboral and oral surface okay in uh, it consists of a central disc you can see here marked over here the central uh, disc and five radiating arms the radial arms okay and mouth is located on the uh, lower surface or the oral surface of the disc and madreporite on the upper surface or the aboral surface anus is absent okay and mouth is surrounded by a peristome um, and leading from the mouth to the tip of each arm on the oral surface it is the five ambulacral grooves and each groove it is uh, like bordered with two rows of tube feet on each side and uh, terminally each arm bears a tentacle and an eye spot okay the aboral surface this is the aboral surface uh, seen here you can see the madripoor right so the aboral surface of the disc uh, and arms they bear numerous short and blunt spines and arranged in bundles and these are known as paxillae okay these are uh, Uh, bundles of uh, what do you call uh, spines and uh, um, like uh, the, that the, the on, found on the aboral surface is what is known as a paxillae and in each bundle in each paxilla if you see spines are arranged in a circle around a basal stalk between the paxillae are the dermal branchiae okay the ossicles uh, sorry what do you call the respiratory structures okay and the dermal branchiae they are hollow outgrowths of the body wall on the aboral surface of the disc you can see uh, in between two arms it is uh, the madreporite is located over here you can see it is a porous plate uh, sieve like plate okay and seen in its uh, grooves okay, as already mentioned it is grooved the madreporite is grooved and it is a porous or sieve like plate and in the grooves we can see numerous openings and these openings are known as hydropores and these hydropores they communicate with the water extensive vascular system which is present inside the body okay internally 
the arms uh, between which the madriporite is uh, located this is referred as the bivium okay these two arms you can see the madriporite it is located within these two arms and these two arms it is known as bivium while these three arms together it is known as a trivium okay try in the sense three okay it's known as a trivium now as i already mentioned the body wall is thin soft and almost transparent and it is supported by numerous calcareous plates which is known as a dermal ossicles okay here the in the case of astropectin the sexes are separate uh, and uh, the se sexual dimorphism very rarely and uh, development is indirect uh, that is they do have a uh, larval stage in their development uh, the larva it is bipinaria bipinaria larva it is uh, here you can see i hope yeah bipinaria larva brachiolaria larva is very rarely found bipinaria larva is the uh, frequently observed larval form in asteroids and these bipinaria larva it is uh, like a uh, ciliated free swimming pelagic uh, larval stage okay in the case of astropectin it is bipinaria larva okay so in asteroids we can find bipinaria as well as brachiolaria larva uh, among the species of asteroids okay fine so this is about the asteroid asteroidia okay thank you